Tonight is a true badge of, uh, of, uh, of our accomplishments as a city. But here's what I'm going to propose, that our biggest accomplishment will be to continue to cultivate this thinking in the next generations so that we ensure that this recognition is ours for decades to come. So thanks again from the Columbus Museum of Art. We're thrilled you're here. Come back on October 25th. And it's now my distinct pleasure to introduce our esteemed guests. And we're going to start with Gary Cavan, CIO of the City of Columbus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the museum for having us back again. You give them a round of applause, please. Um, it's like deja vu, right? Um, this is our third time as a top seven most intelligent city in the world. And uh, I want to tell you just briefly about the process. It begins with 400 cities applying for this designation. It goes down to 21 and then down to seven. So whether we win or not, which I believe we are, but if we don't, we've already won as being one of the top seven communities in the world. People are beginning to talk about Columbus for a lot of reasons, not because of this, but this is one of the reasons around the world. And we deserve that. Um, and so one of the things that has been uh, prevalent in our community has been leadership from the mayor's office and the mayor to council to the business community, the way we collaborate is the reason why I'm standing here tonight again representing our city as being one of the most intelligent communities in the world. And so in the next uh, few weeks, we'll be going to Toronto, June 8th. Um, and then uh, on that trip, they will announce the most intelligent city in the world. Yes, Columbus. <laughs> I'm very hopeful that <laughs> when we come back home, it will be with that designation as the most intelligent community in the world, in the world. Now, one other quick thing. There are only seven of us, right? There's only one other community, and it's a county in Virginia that's in the United States. All their other ones are worldwide. So we're doing something right here. I want to thank uh, our sponsors. I want to thank our partners, uh, because without them, this would not be possible. Uh, and so, um, you know, we're really excited about the next several days. And I think I'm supposed to say, if you are uh, tweeting, we have uh, hashtag intelligent C bus. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> and so, uh, I don't want to take a lot of your time. Uh, this is going to be a fun evening, and I'm going to uh, introduce our next esteemed guest at this point. He's the chair of our committee. And as I said earlier, without leadership, these things wouldn't be possible. Uh, and so I want to introduce to you one of the most dynamic council members on our council. There are several, uh, and you'll meet, get to meet all of them. But Councilman Klein, would you come up, please, sir? Thank you, uh, Director Cavan. Really appreciate it. I'm up here with uh, my colleagues on council, Councilmember Jiza Page and Councilmember Shannon Harden. Uh, Councilmember Eileen Paley was here but had to, to step out for a previous engagement. Uh, we are extremely proud of the third year that we have been recognized as one of the most intelligent uh, cities and communities in the world. And I'm looking around this room, I can see why we're so darn intelligent. Uh, but we work hard uh, at council with investments in education, investments in the arts, investments in small business, investments in entrepreneurship, all of those together with an engaged community and a diverse community that's inclusive yields the results that puts us in this esteemed category of one of the top seven, seven intelligent communities in the world. So thank you for everyone in this room for their leadership, because we wouldn't be on the city's level that we're in without all of you. So thank you so much. So it's my honor to introduce the man that puts the intelligence in Columbus and a little bit of swagger, <laughs> Mayor Michael B. Coleman.
Well, I tell you, these folks are the best, the absolute best. Shannon Harden, Zach Klein, and Jiza Page. They're absolutely great, and uh, we can't do anything good without them. And uh, uh, we got to keep them, keep them going. So I'm so proud of uh, all of you, and I'm so proud of the fact that this is our third time as uh, one of the top seven most intelligent communities in all of the world. How about that? But there's one thing I can assure you. We are among the top seven, not because of me. That's for sure. Uh, but because of you. Because of all the things we have done in this community to elevate each other, to elevate our city and our residents, to focus on the things that matter most. In fact, this year, our emphasis is uh, urban communities. All the things we've done in neighborhoods around our city, from the short north to the King Lincoln District, uh, with the, all the, the PAC effort, Franklinton, around Children's Hospital, and on the south side, and many other places in the city of Columbus. And what they're seeing from us is what makes us special. And what makes us special is the fact that we collaborate, we work together, we look at things comprehensively and not in a silo. In all of those neighborhoods, we've put together a collaboration and a comprehensive effort that is transformative to that community. And each and, one, each and every one of those efforts have resulted in national and international recognition. In fact, Columbus is the best practice around the nation. And we're proud of that. And so, our goal is to win it this year. And we're going to win it. We have to always seek to do better, always reach for higher heights, and believe uh, that we can do anything we put our minds to. It's called swagger. <laughs> Columbus has swagger. And so, I'm going to introduce this video, and when I point, it's going to happen, right? Yeah. Hit it!
We have such a collaborative spirit here. We all work together. We all work together to make the city great for our residents. We have the finest, the best university in all of America right here in the city of Columbus, The Ohio State University. So this next gentleman and I went to Brazil together. We both got goatees. He's had his, mine is new. I'm trying to be like him. Uh, Provost Steinmetz, if you could come forward. And uh, in Brazil, the idea was to connect up our city, our state, and the Ohio State University with alumni and business opportunities in the nation of Brazil. And the Ohio State University opened up a, uh, we call it a gateway, right? A gateway. And uh, we were there to cut the ribbon and to engage in what I think is very important to business and opportunities between the people of Brazil and the people of Columbus, Ohio. Mr. Provost, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, for those that don't know, my real first name is Joe. I don't go by Provost very often. <laughs> um, I've been here in Columbus for about six years. I came here in 2009, and I was absolutely thrilled when Ohio State at that time offered me the position of Vice Provost and Executive Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences here. Um, before deciding to accept the position, my wife Sandy and I took a good long look at Columbus, of course. We we're impressed by the city's solid infrastructure, the robust economic growth, the vibrant arts community, and the university's partnership with the city of Columbus and many, many other entities and, and places like Battelle. We heard of Columbus as a knowledge and information port, which really perks the interest of an academic like me. I took a job and Sandy and I totally immersed ourselves in Columbus. We have a condo downtown here on High Street, uh, right next to the Elevator Brewery, which is very, very convenient. <laughs> they know me well. And in addition, to, I now serve as the university's executive vice president and provost, and I have the good for, fortune of also serving on the board of Experience Columbus Kappa, and I've served on the Columbus Symphony Board as well. All of these are exciting boards to be on, and there's a lot of excitement there. And I just can't say a good thing, enough good things about this very lively community. In addition, Ohio State is proud to celebrate the amazing accomplishment of Columbus as one of the seven most intelligent communities in the world for the third year in a row, and I'm hoping we make a contribution to that. Ohio State proudly partners with the city of Columbus in many arenas, and just to mention a few, such as Partners Achieving Community Transformation, known as PAC. It's a collaboration among the city of Columbus, Ohio State, and the Columbus Metropolitan Housing Authority, working with Columbus City Schools and the Wexner Medical Center to transform the Near East Side. And since 1975, the university has collaborated on a grant competition with Battelle Memorial Institute. It's called BETHA, the Battelle Energy, Engineering, Technology, and Human Affairs Endowment, to foster programs that explore and com complex relationships between science and technology, and also the important broader cultural and social issues. Educators, instructional designers, and technology leaders from around the country come to Columbus every year for Ohio State's Innovate Conference, which will be held shortly, where we learn the best practices for technology and learning and teaching and research. This year's theme is community, and it explores how technology connects to affordable, high-quality learning resources, improves collaboration between scattered researchers, and provides access to education where it otherwise would not be possible. And Ohio State's leaders in educational technology are partnering with industry leaders around Columbus, such as Battelle Education, to prepare local K through 12 students for higher education and fast-paced, highly technical workforce of the future. We're also very proud to be partners in the effort in the Metro School, which is doing wonders in STEM education. And the last I'll mention is that we're working hard to establish strong ties between our university an extremely vibrant arts community that's here downtown in particular. This is evidence of it right here in this facility. And I believe that great arts and great culture make Columbus a great uh, place to live. 
and it's attractive for the talent from all over the world to come and settle here. So it's extremely important that this is supported. We're so proud to join with the uh, Intelligent Community Forum and other institutions from around the world as a full foundation member. I'm pleased to be here with you this evening, and like you, I hope that Columbus will be selected as the Intelligent Community of the Year, and I know it's going to happen. Why? Because like in January, we don't settle for number two in Columbus. We don't at Ohio State. And we didn't in wrestling, we didn't in shooting and synchronized swimming in the last couple of months either. So thank you for making Columbus an exciting place to live, work, and to be educated. Thank you. What I want to do is uh, introduce uh, one of the co-founders of the Intelligent Community Forum. There are three of them, and uh, they have all been to our community now. And so the, the last one to visit is uh, Mr. Lou Zaccarella from New York City. Uh, he will be the one who will be writing a report on us for 2015. <laughs> so be nice to him. He's right there. Okay. Uh, and so the mayor and I want to ask Mr. Yeah, come on, come on up, Lou. Come on up. Now look, Lou says he doesn't have a vote, but he is writing the report. And the strength of the report, I'm sure, has a bearing on the vote. Probably. <laughs> and, and, and here's what I know about this great organization. It is a fabulous organization. Is that he's the man. <laughs> Go ahead, Lou. <laughs> You know, I'm from New York, and I kind of thought I was going to get double teamed there, but uh, I always do, but in a, in a loving way, and that's what makes it such a great city. Um, thank you, Gary, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. Um, this is one of the world's uh, intelligent communities, one of the top seven, and so it was a big year for you. Um, you obviously, uh, you won that thing out in the shoe, uh, and then you did this, so give yourselves a hand. I have to admit something else you probably won't like. I'm a Notre Dame graduate. I told you you wouldn't like it. Um, but I, I did get a chance to uh, go to the 50-yard line today and so I can check one thing off my bucket list. Uh, the, the mayor said earlier that um, he had nothing to do or very little to do with your rise to an intelligent community. I want to take exception with that remark. It's probably the only time I would take exception with anything the mayor has said or done. Uh, under his administration, uh, Mayor Coleman has done one thing that my partner, Robert Bell, reported when he came here, and he said, we have, we have finally found that rare individual, that, that political leader, that mayor, who isn't afraid of a single idea. And I really commend you for that, because we're all about ideas. Uh, our job is really to go around the world, to look at the cities that have the best ideas, that are healing themselves and coming all the way back. And it's all about ideas. And uh, the mayor embraces them, and he does have that kind of swag where he's pulled everybody else along in this city. And so it's, it's a great thing. I just want to tell you a little bit about how you were chosen and, and the kind of company that you kept. We start off our program uh, in the late summer every year and we uh, review about 400 nominations, and they're quite extensive, as, as Gary and some of his people will tell you. Uh, we ask you for a lot of information. We go from 400 to 21 uh, through a process where we have analysts and uh, researchers look at it. You then It's kind of like the football playoffs. You then go from 21 to 7. So if you start breaking it down in terms of where you go, and this is communities around the world, You've gone from about 421 to 7, and you've done it for the third time in a row. And that's, that's a remarkable achievement. We, we judge you on six basic criteria. I won't go into them here, but a lot of it has to do with not just that you have good technology, broadband, but that you are using it to harness things to it that are far more important than technology. Your knowledge, your diversity, your aspiration your sense of community, 
your quality of life. Your quality of life is a state of mind. But when people start believing, as they do in these intelligent communities, something dynamic happens. And you're all experiencing that today, and you've shared it with us, and we share it with the world. You are an up-and-coming smart city in 2008. You are now an intelligent community. So you've graduated. You've got your PhD. And what that means very simply is this. You've got your technology, but you're not going to have a lot of discussions about technology because it's kind of boring. And I'm a technology guy. You're now having discussions about how you go to the next level, how you layer intelligence on there, and how you layer the things that you want to work on over that with the technology below you. So at the end of the day, there's still a lot of work to do. You know, Commissioner Brown, when I was here in November, said that um, there's, a, there's a phrase called repairing the world. And as Ohio goes, so goes the nation. Well, as Ohio goes, so goes the world. And when I tell Columbus' story around the world, people say, how can I be like them? They've repaired themselves. And we show them how. We tell your story. And so I want to commend you on that because, again, you have repaired yourselves. You have helped repair the state. And because of the kind of world we live in today where we're all connected, your message has gone out and has helped us send out a healing message for the world. And I've been around here for the last two and a half days, and, and I'm obviously overwhelmed. I, I really got my, I got knocked out by it all. But there's still work to do. And we know what that work is. We have to bring people together. I'm, one of our characteristics, our criteria, is inclusion, digital inclusion. We have to go there. If we don't go there, we can't call ourselves communities. We think we're getting there. And I know you're getting there. And again, I, I honor that. And I want to be a part of it, and I want to continue to tell your story. One final thing. I really don't make the decision. <laughs> so when you all come, come up to me tonight, be nice. I really don't make the decision. You're going to have 200 jurors, as we call them, voting on information, including my report that we send them. And you're going to have a research company all the way in India looking at the quantitative data that you've sent. So again, you've already won by being one of the top seven. You got a one in seven chance to be Intelligent Community of the Year. But if you get there, I think you know what I'm saying about the type of community you can call yourself. But irrespective of what happens in Toronto, and I welcome you all there, have a little swag. Brag about yourselves. You've done great work. You've inspired me. And I will tell your story around the world. I promise you that. So God bless you, and good night. theme to this three times I've been up here three times we top seven three times is a charm anyway uh, I want to say thank you again to everyone who uh, has supported us uh, a lot of faces I've seen over the past several years look forward to seeing you next year when we celebrate and uh, have fun tonight and and and, and uh, off to Toronto we go on June 8th right We'll be there. Let's bring home the go. See you.